Hi, I'm Steve Johnson, a maker on a budget. I do projects ranging from woodworking, electronics, music, and home repair, all from an engineering perspective. Welcome to my projects. Today's project is an easy to build bucket top dust separator. Here's the finished dust collector. Sawdust from my woodworking projects was clogging the air filter of the garage shop vac. I needed to disassemble it and brush out the air filter once or twice a day. It was also interfering with my wife's use of the shop vac for her own projects. I needed to find a better solution. I thought about buying my own shop vac, but that wouldn't help much. I'd seen dust collection systems on YouTube videos by Jimmy DeResta, Maurice Block, April Wilkerson, Nick Ferry, and others. Some of these looked really elaborate and expensive. Others, including the Thien Baffle, Bill Pence Design, Cyclone, and Cone dust collectors looked intriguing. I thought I could combine various designs to achieve my goals. Here's the first pass at my design. I used parts that were available at my local big box store. I also used tools that I already had. Don't worry if you don't have a table saw, router, or drill press. You can use hand tools to achieve pretty much the same results. In looking at the Thien, Cyclone, and Cone designs, it seemed to me that the key concept was having the air circulate above an opening through which the dust could fall. The air would need to flow around a sharp boundary, causing the dust to leave the airflow and fall to the bottom of a container that could be easily emptied. Multi-container systems seemed clunky to me, especially when they needed to be connected with external hoses. I wanted a self-contained portable system that had all of the good features but none of the clunky ones. Many of the designs on YouTube use really hefty 3 quarter inch plywood. I've worked with 1 quarter inch plywood before and knew that it would probably be stiff enough for what I wanted. I wasn't planning to use the shop vac for any wet applications, so removing the cage and float meant that I could reduce the overall height of the dust separator. I didn't want any residual dust to get into the impeller, so I still needed the filter. It needed to be held away from the impeller blades, though. I used hardware cloth held in place with zip ties to do that, but I also cut down the filter bag. In my design, air comes in through the shop vac's original inlet, through a PVC pipe, into the dust separator layer, and then through a slot to the dust collection bucket. I used back-to-back -back PVC bushings to route the air back up through the dust separator layer and into the impeller. Here I'm cutting the holes for the bushings in the PVC pipe. I'm going to finish the wood surfaces with a wipe-on polyurethane varnish so that they're easy to clean later. So I'm sanding down the surfaces and edges. Here I'm marking the location of the PVC pipe that will bring the air and dust down from the shop fax inlet. The pipe will go into the dust separator layer and will have a 90 degree elbow oriented parallel to the bucket's side to make the airflow in a cyclone. I'm using a Forstner bit here, but you could use a spade bit as well. The two plywood discs are held relative to one another by the back-to-back -back PVC bushings cemented together and epoxied into place on the plywood. The PVC tube and elbow are also epoxied to the plywood. Here I'm test fitting the bushings and the elbow. I want the two plywood discs to sit parallel to one another. The elbow is longer than the two bushings, so to make the discs sit parallel to one another, the elbow needs to be cut down a bit. This won't affect the joint between the PVC pipe and elbow. The bushings were originally for adapting one and a half inch to one inch pipe. They have an internal rim to hold the one inch pipe in place. I want to get rid of this to make sure that the airflow through the back to back bushings is as smooth as possible. I used off the shelf five minute epoxy here. 
I don't use quite enough to justify buying the quart cans of West System Epoxy. I squeezed out equal amounts of the two parts of the epoxy, then mixed it on parchment paper from our kitchen. Off screen, I mixed them together for 10 or 15 seconds with a little nylon spatula, then dribbled it around the joint between the bushing and the plywood. Here's where I positioned the elbow to have the air flow in a cyclone around the bucket wall. I epoxied both sides of the joints to increase stiffness and to make sure the joints were airtight. The first coat of wipe-on polyurethane dries really fast on fresh wood surfaces. It was ready for a second coat in about 15 minutes. Take your time and get the bushings positioned as close as you can to center on center. I used slower set PVC cement to make sure I had enough time. I originally tried using caulk here, but couldn't get the nozzle far enough in. The caulk also doesn't stick to the bucket material very well. The adhesive-backed weather seal worked great though, especially after cleaning the inside of the bucket with isopropyl alcohol. Once the lower layer of weather seal is firmly in place, push the assembly back in against it and apply the top layer of weather seal. It's time to test fit the bucket top shop vac. Hopefully you started with a piece of PVC pipe that is now too long and can be cut down. The rim of the inlet port on the Home Depot bucket top shop vac is slanted, so for the best fit, the PVC pipe should be cut to match that slant. This requires some careful measuring and marking. Take your time, you only have one chance to get it right. You may have noticed that I haven't glued the PVC pipe into the elbow. This was my backup option, which fortunately I didn't have to use. If you measured and cut accurately, everything should fit together now. I marked the outside of the bucket at the PVC pipe. This made it easier to align the inlet port with the pipe. Ever notice how two nested buckets are hard to get apart? My design depends on that. Here's the finished dust collector. This miter saw has an exhaust port that's the same diameter as the hose for the shop vac. It generates lots of dust, at least some of which goes out through that exhaust port. Let's give it a try here. And now let's take a look at the results. There's plenty of dust in the bottom bucket and no dust in the top area or caught in the air filter. Well, this seemed to work out okay. It wasn't too expensive, met all of my goals, and I have some ideas of what to try next. Please leave comments below and watch for my next project video. Thanks again!